Should we start? Sure. Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you to those of you who are still in person in Japan and have stuck around for this last session of the IETF week. And many thanks to those of you who have joined online at various hours in your home time zones, some more uh, difficult than other time zones to be attending. So thank you for that. I'm Eve Schuler. Hello, I'm Rick. And, and we are really pleased to have um, Lou Berger as our delegate today. He's up on the stage or wherever it is in the room. Um, and welcome to Karina as well. Um, let's see. Uh, and you are in the raw session, <laughs> in case you were wondering where you are at this hour. Um, again, since it's been a long week and you've probably seen this many times, we'll give you a brief overview of the note well. It's important uh, to re remind you that there are various topics um, that the IETF takes seriously, not least of which is um, uh, declaring early and often uh, involvement in any patents that might impact uh, uh, the uptake of um, material um, or content, and additionally, our code of conduct where we take it seriously that we um, treat each other with respect um, and we work very hard to collaborate um, to make forward progress that we're civil and polite and appreciative of everyone's time. Um, uh, you should also know that this is being recorded and that um, by being an attendee, uh, you acknowledge uh, the use of uh, your uh, audio and video and any written materials. Um, of course, IETF uh, offers ombudsman uh, services should you need them, um, somebody to speak to. Um, should you want to read more details about these policies, uh, there are links listed in our slideware, um, but you can also, of course, always approach working group chairs and um, ADs. And we have our routing AD here in the room, John Scudder, who's sitting there. There he is waving at us, who's been really a great um, partner in this effort. Um, if you are on site, you should, you should know that we are using um, and managing the queue via the Meet Echo tool. And so uh, this is the icon that you should click on in the data tracker and uh, to put yourself in the queue. And of course, for those of us remote, we are all here already, so you know how to use the full tool. Uh, and that's the icon for it. Um, let's see, attendees should be wearing masks. And uh, we request that if you're not speaking, um, to please keep your audio and video off. And if you're remote, please use your headset uh, to make things more uh, comprehensible and uh, understandable to those um, online. We are in need of a minute taker. Um, and uh, Lou has kindly dropped the, the link to the uh, notes um, into the chat window. Which, should you like to click on it? Uh, that would be really helpful. And uh, it's collaborative, so just join right in. And the meeting materials are uh, where, we, where you would expect them uh, off of the data tracker. And should you want to join the list, uh, this is how you do so to subscribe. And if you want to learn more about RAW, the link is provided there. The um, status of our documents, I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled that Karina is here with us because um, we have uh, a new RFC. In fact, it's our first RFC. And Karina and her uh, co-authors, Nils and Thomas, uh, should be congratulated, along with Pascal, who was the shepherd, and John, who did his fair share of heavy lifting. So bravo, brava, um, really thrilled that the LDAX um, draft has uh, graduated to RFC status. Uh, we have another draft that is uh, fairly far along and um, we also have uh, some of the co-authors here online as well. Uh, the use cases draft, which um, I believe all of any of the issues that were raised have been resolved at this point, and I think it is awaiting AD review. Um, and uh, so that looks to be uh, 
advancing in short order. Uh, the technologies draft um, has been ready for advancement as well. It awaits a write-up, and as you'll see later in our session, we uh, the shepherd was assigned to Carlos, who has been very busy writing lots of drafts, leading lots of sessions, and then having his second child. So congratulations on that. But in the meantime, we await the write-up for the, the technologies draft but we're hoping that that will happen soon and we'll work with him to progress that. Uh, although we focused on the architecture draft uh, almost uh, completely uh, the last session, the last IETF at IETF 115, um, we will come back to that uh, in short order, but for now uh, it won't be discussed at the at this particular meeting. We will be getting presentations on um, the use cases draft, the OAM draft, and the uh, mobility draft. Um, so stay tuned for that. The um, industrial requirements draft, we did reach back out to the co-authors of that, and there is interest to progress it, even though it is expired. Um, and we may also, um, in order to progress it uh, further, because it's really in very good shape, um, we may add, uh, we may seek additional authors to help push that over the line. Um, and then there are several other drafts that are, um, uh, you know, progressing through the natural order of uh, presentations and so forth, but, but which have not uh, as yet been adopted by the working group. Anything else to add on that front, Rick? Uh, no, I think that's probably about right. I'll make a quick comment. Eve, your mic is scratching on your collar a little bit. Oh, I hate when that happens. Okay. Just yeah. give you a little bit of noise. Yeah. There we go. Brilliant. In fact, yeah. let's just take off this jacket. Okay. Thank you very much. It's cold. It's actually cold by California standards. Um, this is our agenda for the day. Um, and as you can see, Carlos Bernardos is the man of the hour and or the person of the hour. Uh, and so Carlos uh, is going to pre be presenting all three of the drafts. And um, Carlos, would you like to drive from your screen or would you like us to drive? Uh, hi, everyone. I think if I can use the share slides tool, that would be great. Okay. Uh, to basically preload the, the slides. So let me see. So should I start? Yes. Uh, Over to you. Eve, you okay? You've got it. Brilliant. Okay, so let me see. Grant we we have granted you permission. Yes. Great. So this is the first one, right? Perfect. So, yeah. uh, thank you very much, guys. So uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I think I will be the, the the man of the half hour, probably. I, I don't I don't think I will be uh, using the the whole hour. So anyway, let's start with the raw use cases. So this is just a reminder of uh, what we cover in the the use cases. These are the use cases that have been that are covered by the in the draft um, in in different or in detail following the. This is structure, basically we have the description of the use case, the specifics of the use case, the challenges, a bit of a justification of why wireless is uh, important for that specific use case, and then the raw specific requirement section with uh, also a, 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 as a section dealing or, or, or uh, detailing what are the non-latency critical considerations for that particular use case. So this has been the structure for for a long time, it's been quite uh, stable. And the status of the document or, or the update from the previous ITF is basically that the document went through the, the ISG evaluation. We got a first round of comments, very uh, detailed run of comments in, in November. We got many reviews also from some directories and from the ASG, from the ADs. We had a, in a summary, we got a discuss from Roman and uh, with many, many, many useful comments, a very useful review, uh, including some requests for quantitative uh, aspects in some use cases and a few other things. 
we uh, submitted a new version addressing these comments as well as the, the other comments from the ADs, and the discussion from Roman was cleared in, uh, in March. We also got an abstain from Martin. Uh, we provided comments. Uh, so far, we didn't get any, any feedback from that. And uh, as I mentioned, we address all, all the comments. So basically, I think we are waiting for the ID to take a look. And I don't know if uh, for the ISG to take a, a look and then uh, hopefully provide uh, or, or adopt, uh, accept the document in this uh, revision and, and go to the next steps. But uh, I don't know if, if our ID can maybe uh, provide some comments on this. Just, just for me as well and, and for the rest of the authors to know if we are if they are waiting for us to do anything, just to, to be sure that we don't miss that. Yep, uh, John Scudder here. Um, and thanks for setting that up. Right, so you're, you're exactly right that what the next step is for me to check back in and review the changes. Um, and from what I've skimmed through on the, on the email, it looks to me like there's not going to be any need for any process beyond that. So um, th there doesn't need to be a, a it, it would be only in extraordinary cases that there would have to be like another last call or IESG review or anything like that. Probably what will happen is I'll um, review the updates and I'll say, awesome, you have taken care of, I mean, Roman already cleared his disgust. So Roman already thinks that, you know, you've got it nailed. Um, Martin's position is an abstain, which is non-blocking. Um, so probably the only, you know, process that has to happen is I have to review and then I have to click and then off it goes to the RFC editor. And of course, I'll be in touch with you if, you know, there's anything else needed, but that's not my expectation at this time. So I should be able to take care of that in the, in the coming week. Okay. Thanks, and thanks, thanks for all your work on it. Well, thanks very much for, for your support. You have been very, very useful, uh, helpful and, and supportive. So thanks a lot. So that will be it for, for this one. Any other comments, questions? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so then we can go to the next one that I think is this. So this is a, a, a different, uh, this, this is basically a, an individual submission that we uh, submitted for this ITF. It's called Mobile PV6 Raw Mobility and basically it's a, an attempt to look into the mobility problem in raw, which I think has not been yet uh, address and I think that that may be relevant in, in some use cases where basically you may have a, a terminal connected to uh, a raw domain uh, where that terminal may be mobile and that in, implies mobility what we are very used to in, in ITF uh, but also mobility in a very specific scenario with very specific constraint requirements because of, of raw, so reliability, availability thing with mobility is a bit uh, more challenging. So the goals of the document is to basically discuss what may be the control plane extension solutions that we need to uh, think of to cope with mobility by basically doing some things proactively. Well, again, this proactive management in mobility is not new in the ITF. There have been uh, a lot of work uh, in the mobile IPv6 area. But again, here we need to take care of what we need to do in the network to basically compute the paths and try to do things in advance to, to minimize the impact on the, on the, of the handovers in the, in the treatment of the flows. And then additionally, we define some mobile IPv6 extensions that basically uh, do this uh, or, or provide these extensions, control plane extensions to provide mobility management in, in a raw environment. So this is a bit the motivation and the summary of what we do in this draft, which is just a, a first attempt to foster discussion in the, in the group. It's not more than that. So 
So this is the table of contents. We have the problem statement at the beginning. We have some uh, terminology as usual. And then we have the, the control plane extension for the terminal. And for that, we have a terminal initiated section at the beginning. Then we have a network control section that uh, in this version of the draft is, is not yet uh, provided, but it's basically a, a modification of the terminal initiated or terminal control mobility. And then we have the mobile IPv6 extensions. This draft, by the way, as we will I will discuss at the at the end, has been also uh, presented in this ITF in the DMM working group, which is inter an internet area working group, basically dealing with mobility management. And, and, and as of today, is the the working group in charge of mobile IPv6 maintenance. So we believe that was also uh, a good working group relevant for this type of work. And then after we have the IANA consideration, security considerations, the usual stuff. So the scenario, very simple. Uh, this were more for the DMM working group to understand. We have a terminal that is attached to a row network, a scenario where you may have multiple row nodes. You may have uh, uh, PSE associated with each of the row nodes in a distributed fashion. We have a PCA, a path computational element for the domain. And just for the sake of an example, we have, a, we have a, an XR server, which is the application that we use in the draft as an example of driving this, where you, you have the, the terminal connected to that server that requires in the network these uh, row conditions. And then you are mobile and you want to keep the, the QS, let's say, of the flows between the terminal and the, and the server. Then uh, the kind of way we address this problem for the terminal initiated terminal control mobility is the one that we have in the figure. So we have here the terminal on the left hand side, the server on the right hand side, the PCE close to the to the server in the figure. Doesn't mean that it has, has to be close to the server by any means. And then some nodes. And basically the, the terminal is moving from one uh, row node, a uh, point of attachment that we call the old point of attachment on current point of attachment to a new row node, a new point of attachment. And what we have there is a, uh, the first step, which is kind of optional, is uh, basically uh, about learning uh, to which new point of attachment the terminal may need to attach to and the information associated to that. That is optional in the sense that uh, the terminal may obtain that information by different means and the document doesn't get into those type of details. Once the terminal has decided to move to the new point of attachment, it signals to the current or old point of attachment that it's, it's going to be moving to a new one with the message row handover indication. That contains some information for the old point of attachment to get in touch with the new one and provide information for the new one to proactively prepare the network for the handover. And this is basically what is done in the step number two, the row Hanover initiate. That allows the new point of attachment to compute some uh, tracks and, and prepare the network for the moment the actual Hanover takes place. Once these uh, tracks, this preparation is done, the new point of attachment or the candidate point of attachment can signal back to the old point of attachment that this is okay. This then can be go back or get back to the actual terminal. And at this point, it's optional. We indicate in the document that we may be doing uh, some by casting, meaning that traffic may get to the current or uh, slash old point of attachment and to the new point of attachment to maximize reliability or to minimize uh, packet loss. Then the actual layer two handover takes place. And then the, the by casting stops and the Basically, the, the flow gets to the new point of attachment. And this basically tries to minimize the, the impact, as I mentioned before. So this is the simple UE, or terminal control initiated mobility management. This signaling, for those that are maybe not familiar with mobile P mobility management, this row Hanover indication initiate is basically extensions of what is done in mobile IP v6 protocol for proactive mobility management fast handovers. So it's just an extension. This is not uh, meant to be completely new 
messages uh, on, on its own. Then we have the network control. I will not go into the details. It's basically this kind of same thing, but with the trigger and the control on the network. So the network is the one that basically decides this terminal is going to be moving from this current kind of point of attachment to this new point of attachment. So there is no trigger from the from the terminal. It's triggered by the network itself. But then the rest of the signal is basically the same. And then in the document, and again in the presentation, I will not go into the details because I guess this is just for the sake of uh, initial discussion. We have the extensions that we define to the mobile IP, the proxy mobile IP six extensions, uh, the run Hanover initiate, run Hanover acknowledgement, and then the the new mobility options that are contained on these uh, options that are the row ID mobility options to indicate the or to convey an ID of the row domain. This is for the case that we may have in the future also multi-domain or uh, inter-domain handovers. Then we have the PoID mobility option that is uh, just to to transport an ID of the of the point of attachment, the new and the old, and the QS mobility option just to indicate or to convey to the new one what are the requirements for the for the flow. And in terms of next steps. Uh, the goal for the of the authors was to collect feedback from the community, from the DMM and the raw working group, and then based on that, see whether there is interest in in working on something like this, uh, and then continue working on that. Hopefully, getting more people on board and and progressing this further. So, any questions, any comments from uh, whether you mainly whether you think this is an interest uh, interesting problem to work on, independently of whether this is the a potential solution or we may need into to, to look into other other things. Go ahead, Janos. I see you in the queue. Hi, Carlos. Thank you. A quick question. Uh, uh, 5G is one of the raw technologies. Is this needed in case of 5G? I think but uh, this is one very good very good question that we may need to look into into details but i think that uh, even for the case of 5g uh, i'm not sure with the current specification whether this has been considered uh, to prepare the network considering the the very high constraint requirements of, of raw that's a question that uh, i'm not completely sure uh, how it's done today with the uh, urlc uh, for preparing and, and, and executing a Hanover, whether during the Hanover itself, this is uh, the, these conditions are maintained. I guess this the, your question goes along those lines, right, Janos? Janos, I don't. I think we've lost you, Janos. Has a comment okay. to say, right? Right. Yes. So yeah, this is something that we uh, is a very good point, and we will need to to take a look because also there are there are not only in Wi in, in 5G but also in Wi-Fi. There, uh, as another example, we may need to take a look because depending on the technologies, for example, the the optional step that I mentioned in the in in the figure, uh, this step number zero. Uh, you may have more or less information depending also on the specific what the technology that you use. So this will be something to to introduce into uh, further into a revision of the document. Yes, that's a very good point. Um, I'm in the queue, so I'm I'm going to jump in at this point. Um, I think you've half answered my question: is whether this has applicability across multiple lower layers, and therefore I think it might. If the answer is yes then I think this is valuable work. Uh, yeah, 5G may have a solution for this, but as you say, Wi-Fi technologies or um, alternative link layer wireless technologies may not have this, and having the capability within, within, within mobile IPv6 may well be useful, you know, alongside mobile IPv6. Yeah, uh, and uh, another comment, basically, or, or complementing this is that we may also have, this is not explicitly mentioned in the draft yet because it's just an initial version but uh, we may also have uh, multi-technology or inter-technology handover so you may be considering that in some scenario a, a terminal may be connected to a wi-fi 
point of attachment access point and then because of the movement it, it may get out of the coverage and has to maybe go to 5g and yeah. uh, in some environments you may need to to do this and then you need to have something that is no pure layer two technology to support that you need to do something on, on top layer three so that's completely be another reason for this go ahead Balaj. uh Balaj varga erickson uh, just one comment regarding the 5G stuff. Uh, so uh, in 3GPP in release uh, 18, they have defined and uh, generalized the TSN support. And it is called not time sensitive communication, TSC. And uh, that is where uh, uh, the endpoints uh, uh, are fully uh, covered with the functionalities and including handover stuff like that. So it is not part of the URRC. Of course, in URRC, the, you, you have some functionalities, uh, but regarding uh, time sensitive communication and deterministic communication, uh, it is also defined in, in uh, 3GPP in release uh, 18. Okay, thanks, Valash. Okay, um, thanks, Carlos. If there's no more questions on this, shall we move on to the next deck? Yeah, and I guess uh, the initial feedback we got is that there seems to be some interest, so we will continue uh, working yeah, on this. Yeah, I'll. I agree. I think uh, with chair hat on, I think there is interest in this work. Um, I mean, personally, I can see that this is interesting. Uh, so yeah, don't 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 stop on this. Okay, so I uh, request again the permission. There we go. Okay, thanks, thanks. Um, so this is me again on the last uh, uh, item uh, on, on draft presentation for today. So this is on the OIM, uh, very short update as well. This is me presenting on behalf of my uh, of the co-authors of the draft. Um, First slide is a summary, a very nice summary on the updates of uh, the lifetime, lifespan of this document and how also there were some things that went into dead specific OEM and then things that went into raw specific OEM. This is for the raw specific, of course. And you can see from the different versions what have been the main changes done. In this case, we are going to focus on the changes from version 05 to version 06 that was uh, uh, submitted in March uh, this month, basically. So first uh, type of updates that we did were on terminology. So we have now the maintenance endpoint and the maintenance intermediate point, the MEP and MIP. So basically the uh, maintenance endpoint is an entity that is uh, capable of creating or reacting to OEM messages. And then and these are meant to be on the edges of the uh, domain. And then there is the maintenance intermediate point that is the enti an entity that is capable of responding to OEM messages. And again, we, def uh, we also define the OEM domain, which is uh, basically the monitor domain with the MEPs on its edges. So we clarify, we uh, updated slightly a bit the terminology with this, uh, these terms. Then we... Uh, made different clarifications on many places. For example, we clarify a bit about, or we were more explicit on the interactions between layer two and layer three that are required for uh, OIM. We also were uh, added a bit more specific text to distinguish between raw and deadnet. That is kind of the generic uh, framework, but uh, raw is for the wireless specific. So we had a text uh, that was more clearly specifying or indicating that the raw specific part deals with the wireless uh, segments of the network. We also introduced a citation, a proper citation for the PF in the draft. And we also had some text about Anycast. Then we also did some clarification that is kind of terminology uh, as well on the two categories for faults fault detection and fault identification. Before I think we have fault detection, verification, and, and fault identification isolation or something like that, we now uh, use these terms that we believe are, are better for, for the two categories that we cover in the draft for faults. 
And then we also um, indicated in the in some part of the draft where we talk about the delay estimation in wireless that there are some components that need to be considered specifically because of the wireless that has to do with the queuing, uh, median access and retransmissions that may take place into the wireless medium. Then we did changes, we revamped the prediction subsection. We play a bit with the text and we believe that now the text is better than before. Um, basically, we, we explained that for the prediction, we need to uh, basically assess what are the gains of a potential reconfiguration when you predict that something may change and the, the cost of that reconfiguration and depending on that, that information may be useful for actually deciding whether that reconfiguration is worth uh, taking into account the, the gain and the cost of that reconfiguration when you predict that that may be needed. So we believe that the new text is more clear about this. And this is basically a summary of what we have done. We believe that the draft is now stable. Uh, of course, as usual, we always are very grateful about your comments, suggestions. And uh, we believe that the, that it may be the, the point now to go to working group. Last call, of course, is the working group at the chairs that they did agree on all this. Um, any comments, questions? I wonder if you can share with us also the status of the DebtNet OAM draft. I think I saw that it had progressed, uh, or maybe Lou, you can comment on that as well. Lou, you want to go ahead? I'm, I'm, no, we honestly go ahead. Well, I, I think, yeah, the, the DeadNet uh, uh, document is also quite stable, I would say. Uh, um, so I think what we are basically about to be done with those. Uh, so it's up to us to, to go for that. I think one of the concerns that we have is that we likely need the architecture document to be stable and um, before we finish the OAM draft. And so um, it is pretty far along um, and we'll have a, another conversation about that at the end of the session. Um, but uh, I, you know what, I think that was one of the comments that has come up, uh, but otherwise the draft looks uh, fairly solid and the current um, improvements look good. So, so Rick here, um, it's always difficult to block one document that's in good condition on another one. Um, so there's a bit of a, a bit of a fine art here to, I think this draft is in really good state for working group last call. I think it's got sufficient review. Um, the question is whether, as Eve said, the architecture document is, is kind of a, a critical dependency on this one and it's not progressing as fast as we would like. So um, I think this is a discussion between probably the DebtNet chairs, yourself, um, us, the chairs and the AD about how we, how we make progress on this um, purely from a sort of process perspective rather than a content perspective. Um, I think a working group last call is, is probably a valid request and we probably could go to a working group last call, but it may then sit there for a while while we try and sort out the other document. Lou, go ahead. You're, you're wiser in these things than I am. Okay, speaking, even though I'm sitting up here, I'm a contributor. Uh, I, I think going to last call is a good idea. And one of the things you can ask during the last call is, should this wait for the architecture document or not? Or what part is blocked by the architecture? Because uh, Carlos was right. The um, framework is, I think it's in uh, John's queue, uh, is my memory. For DebtNet, I may be wrong, but I'm doing it by memory. That's always dangerous. Uh, and we have an MPL, uh, okay. And, we, and then we have an MPLS document that's super close. And, um, and the IP document is almost there. It has like one section that needs a, a, a good revision before we go to last call. So I, th I think- And you're talking you know, about all of the first. related OAM documents for those folks who are not aware. Right. Yeah, and these are all exactly part of the same family. Say, yeah, these are all DebtNet OAM documents that this sort of lines up nicely with. And I think doing a read to see whether or not there's sections that are blocked by the architecture is a great idea. Uh, but you can certainly go to last call and, and figure that out as part of that. Thank you. 
thank you for that advice. That sounds very good. Go ahead, John. John. And I, I put myself in, in the queue to say, um, this seems like kind of also a natural time, uh, since Pascal mentioned in the, in the Zulip chat that he thought that, if I understand your comment correctly, Pascal, that the architecture document, in his opinion, is ready for last call. That was what I, he didn't, he didn't use the words last call. He said it's ready or something like that. So. Go ahead, Lou. Okay, thanks. Um, I was scrambling to find the old messages to respond to and say to um, to Pascal and say, I hear that you think the architecture is ready, but we had a, a series of discussions that uh, back in October that we never closed off on, and I think we have to close off on those discussions and make sure that those issues are addressed before uh, doing the last call. Some of them are just terminology, but some of them are also some. Uh, how to uh, represent the wireless uh, layer to the routing layer. So can I, can I just chair hat on for a second? Can I just jump in and ask us to hold this precise conversation about the architecture document for a little bit later into the agenda? Because um, just answering Carlos, I think, yeah, a working group last call is perfect for this, taking on board um, Lou's comment. I think... Yeah, great document, great condition. We'll line up with the rest of the DebtNet stuff. We'll understand what state it's in here and we'll debate how we make progress on this document. The reason I, I kind of stepped in at that point is, um, thank you, Carlos. We've got some more uh, topics we want to discuss in this session, which will then bring us, I think, neatly on to discussing where we go with the architecture document and, and, and so on. If that's okay? Yep, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Eve, do you want to go back to showing the slides? Yes. And you get to see my pretty face again. Ha -ha. Uh, let me see. All right. I think I'm looking at, this was our agenda. Yep. So we're jumping onto the discussion yep. there. Okay. Go ahead, Eve. You can cover the first one. Sure. Um, well, uh, uh, Janos uh, shared with us that there was an invitation from the IEEE 802 uh, group and with their plenary in July that they're looking for a raw tutorial, which is fabulous. Um, that there's both interest and there will be visibility. And uh, it looks like both uh, Janos and Carlos, well, Carlos will lead and, and Janos will partner on presenting kind of a debt net into raw uh, tutorial for that community. So that's coming up. Um, and uh, the other notable news is that uh, both Rick and I have had um, changes to our work situations and we are both looking to transition off of being co-chairs of the working group. Um, however, we have, uh, you know, been in close discussion with John, the AD, and Lou, and Janos, and we all believe that uh, it would be beneficial to get to a good juncture with several of these rather mature documents, um, get them in a good state, and then roll the uh, raw group back into DetNet, which is where it was spawned in the, from in the first place. Um, so that is our big news here. Um, Rick, did you want to make some additional comments regarding that? Yeah. So, so some of the thinking that went into, into this proposal was, um, uh, aside from even my uh, uh, professional change in circumstances, um, neither, first off, neither of us want to leave this group in the lurch and just say, goodbye, this is the end, and just, just run off and leave you with an empty room. Um, so our intention is to, is to continue to, to chair through some transition with RAW to whatever the, the next um, iteration of RAW is. And in our opinion, where I think RAW has got a little bit unstuck is getting the wider review, particularly around the architecture document, which is a major piece of work for RAW. And, and we can all tell um, progress hasn't been as quick as we would all like. 
And I think pulling it into the wider forum of DebtNet should get that, that wider peer review and that better consensus about the shape of the document and hopefully make progress, which I hope Pascal will appreciate because he's put masses of work into this and it would be great to get it closed off because it is a valuable piece of work. But I feel RAW is such a small group that we're not ever quite getting on top of this stuff. So uh, just to recap, even I don't want to leave the group in, a, in the lurch, but we want to make sure that it's set up for success in the future, whether that's part of the larger debt net, because we are talking about deterministic networking and with good documents on the use cases on some of the OAM extensions, that really sets us up in a good position to go back into the larger debt net and say here is all the evidence and hard work which supports the wireless use case take that into consideration as we're building those wider things does that help or am i waffling oh, that sounds terrific any other comments from lou or john and janos for that matter he's also online So I'll, I think you've covered it pretty well. I, um, I guess what I would add is that, so the tentative plan that we've come up with is as you say, um, um, the, the main thing I want to say is it's not a done deal. Um, and obviously the next step is what we're doing right now, which is sharing it with the entire group. Um, and if people have input, um, concerns, et cetera, that they have either right now or that come into your minds over the next few days, um, you know, please reach out to the chairs, me, whoever you feel is the right person to reach out to, and we'll take it on board. But but I like the plan. I, I think it feels like the right one, and I, you know, very much appreciate how the sets of chairs have worked together to come up with it. Um, that's all. Thanks. Carlos? Yeah, uh, very briefly. I just want to basically uh, thank you guys for the for the work and the support all this year. So I think you made a, an awesome work. So I think that uh, deserves uh, uh, recognition. This is my first point. And then the second point, is on the on the plan. I, I fully agree with that. I think that that makes sense. My only comment or question will be: How do we plan to deal with? Uh, I mean, adding uh, this stuff into the internet that is already a quite uh, active working group that will uh, add more uh, load. And uh, I guess in the meetings, maybe we may need to have more uh, session time to deal with all of that. I guess that will be taken care of at. at proper time, but uh, I assume this is going to be uh, considered, right? Maybe having more than one session if required and these type of things. So just to address that, Carlos, we, we have been talking to uh, Janos and Lou about this before we, you know, floating the idea as a, as a concept to make sure it fitted within um, their thoughts about that. No, they're the co-chairs and, and of course, with John who's AD for both, of the, both groups. And yes, you're right, that will be a challenge. Um, and I don't have the answer. And I'm kind of looking for, for Lou to have opinions here. But yeah, it is a valid point. So uh, I appreciate Carlos's setup. Uh, he, um, first of all, he the first thing he said was to thank uh, Rick and Eve for their really good work and, and shepherding the, uh, uh, the activities, the creation of the working group and, and the accomplishments to date. And I, I, that was the first thing I wanted to talk about. So I really appreciate that he, he brought that up. Um, and I completely second that, those sentiments. Uh, the next point was that I was going to talk about is the same one that uh, Carlos talked about is uh, how are we thinking about managing it? Well, um, DetNet's in a different place than we were when Ross spun out. We had quite a bit more um, fundamental work going on, and that work is really wrapping up. The last bit of that was the OAM work, and that's coming to a close right now. So you know, the, the group, that group is more mature, and um, it's not idle, that's for sure. And we have a new sort of theme going on on queuing, 
Um, and that really hits a very niche group. There's a whole bunch that are actively interested in it, but it's just a segment of, of the interested parties who participate in DebtNet. The other part that participate, I think uh, the raw work is much more in their interest, the general architecture, the fundamental behavior of deterministic networks, how to deliver deterministic networks in a general way. And I think those are the, those are the people, those are the resources that we're hoping we'll be able to leverage and apply to uh, wrapping up the pieces that don't get closed out before they, uh, before raw, uh, you know, shuts down and, and transitions its work to DetNet. So I think we have people. Um, yeah, we're going to need to spend some time. The uh, queuing discussion could take all the time of the whole week, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, and we're managing that by having these side meetings, so we can have long discussions on each topic rather than five minutes. We can have. 45 minutes or two hours. So I think, I think we have it managed that way. Um, and it, I, I think it aligns really well with the interests of the, of the group. So we're, I'm very hopeful about the plan. Thank you. Thanks, Lou. Um, and uh, while we're all being a little bit self-congratulatory, I, Eve and I are both absolutely confident that, that Lou and Janos do a great job with DebtNet and, and it is a good, safe pair of hands to, uh, to, to pass the working group to. One question I was, I was wondering about having a, a virtual poll on, but um, just a comment on the chat is probably quicker because this isn't anything sort of binding, is how many of the participants here also participate in DebtNet? And I, because my gut tells me that everyone's in both meetings anyway. And I, I think maybe the... it would be easier to ask who on the list is not a DebtNet participant, uh, because yeah. many of the names we are familiar with um, and see over at DebtNet. So if you would like to drop that into the chat, or maybe we just do a poll. Uh, let's before. just do a poll. I mean, we've got the time, and it doesn't take long to. Okay. I'll just do a quick show of hands. Um, uh, There we go. Massively quick one. Do you not participate in DebtNet? Is the question. It's just so to give us some idea. Do do? What, what do we uh, do, do if we do participate? If you do participate in DebtNet, do not raise your hand. I'm looking for, uh, in the Venn diagram of DebtNet and RAW, I'm looking for people who, who only are goes in to RAW, RAW only. So you raise your hand if you're if you only attend RAW. If you attend, uh, should I kill this and do the reverse the negative? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we've got we've got people doing it. Okay. Yeah, qu qu questions with double negatives are always really successful. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, so actually, yeah, that's that. It's that's about interesting. Half. It's it's about half of, of quite a small polling group. Okay. Okay. So um, I think it would be useful to ask the broader uh, email list, actually. And <laughs> I think that probably is that would probably definitely be part of the discussion. So just to, to, to follow up from the comment I made on the on the chat, our intention is, as all the chairs of all the groups and the ADs involved is not to make this a sudden um, sort of mandated from on high transition is to make sure that this is the right move for the working group and the and most importantly not the working group the content we are trying to work on so this is about the documents so uh there will be discussion on the list if you have strong objections or uh, strong opinions or weak opinions step to the mic now get your comment on the mailing list because i we would the welcome ITF. them we would welcome them okay cool i'm gonna end that poll yeah, and I would I would also like to um, take a moment to thank um, Lou and Janusz, who have been amazing role models of what really great co-chairs look like, and also terrific mentors. They have been uh, alongside of us every step of the way, um, and it has been greatly appreciated. And it has also, uh, as others have noticed and commented, even in this session, John has been a great AD also so um thank you to the whole team and to all of our co-authors who were trying to you know uh get these documents mature and progress through the system we think it's been a terrific community 
and we are looking forward to seeing how it lives on um, and is, is nicely integrated back into DebtNet. Brilliant. Um, so just to try and keep things back onto the agenda, because we don't have a great deal more to finish in this session. The, the elephant in the room is the architecture draft. So we need to understand, and I'm not sure we're going to decide now, the future of the architecture draft. So with many of the uh, the use cases document, as we've, as we've seen, is very, very close to ISG submission. Um, we, we've gone through those final reviews. The OAM draft is in a great place for working group last call. Um, lots of good review, seems very uncontentious, so that last call will probably go successfully. The architecture document has slightly stalled because um, the authors believe it's ready. There are people who still have comment on it. Yes, it could go into a last call, but I think it would sit in that last call. The question really for the group is, do we keep RAW alive long enough to, keep the, uh, to, to get the architecture document into a good condition? Or is the opportunity of transitioning RAW into DebtNet the opportunity to adopt the architecture document within the larger DebtNet group and use the wider audience in DebtNet to get over the hurdle of last call? I can see the answer is easy for the rest of the documents we've got. It's that architecture document. Ah, and uh, Carlos mentions the technologies. I know, Carlos, we meant to talk about the technologies. You've said before you've been busy. No need to apologize. Um, that I think I don't see that one as being particularly contentious, and it will it will roll through how it how it goes. But does anyone have opinion about the architecture? Lou, I know you started to talk about it, and I and I interrupted. John, go ahead. Um, this is me reacting in the moment, but um, it's, I, I think I agree with Pascal that sometimes the only way to um, really drive the level of engagement that's necessary to get a significant document over the finish line is to um, declare a working group last call. And that sometimes turns into a motivation for interested parties to arrange their schedules accordingly so that they can, you know, prioritize time to do the review. Um, that's, you know, uh, just sort of a, a sad fact of life is all of us have two, well, two priorities in our priority queue. It's like hair on fire and... <laughs> Everything, everything else that gets starved out by the hair on fire parts. So I, I, you know, to to be a little jokey about it, um, in, in in a way, the suggestion is, well, let's let our let our hair on fire, and we're pretty sure we can get it extinguished in time. Um, so as to whether that, you know, let's just suppose that we're going to use a working group last call. I mean, really, what a working group last call is is a um, you know, it's an announced period of time. It's like, speak now or forever, hold your peace. Um, whether we do that in debt net managed by um, Eve and Rick, or whether we, I'm sorry, in raw managed by Eve and Rick, or we, whether <laughs> we in debt net managed by Lou and Janos, um, I, I'm really, I don't have a strong opinion about which group it must take place in. Um, if if I were Lou and Janosch, I might say, even if it was taking place under the DebtNet umbrella, I might ask nicely that even Rick um, help run that last call. Um, so it's, I, in a way, I think the organizational question is the, the least important. Um, the most important questions are, you know, is this the right time? You know, are are we ready to do it? Um, with that, I will stop talking because Lou is standing behind me. Just jumping in very quickly, John, I don't think the question was ever, ever an administrative question. I think we're still circling around is, 
do we think it is ready to even go into last call? And that's where I'm hoping Lou's going to, as Lou is one of the the the, 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 the debaters in that, I'm interested in Lou's opinion. So uh, it's interesting you say it's not administrative because I was going to come, come up and say I have two points. One's administrative, one, one is a contributor. So from an, administrative, from an administrative perspective, which I know you're not, didn't expect me to talk about. Uh, I, I'm okay. I don't have an objection to doing a last call, um, but I would suggest do it in both working groups. And the reason I say that is actually my technical, from the technical side. I think the disconnect in the discussion has been having a wider perspective on the architecture. In particular, I've made a number of comments of how the raw architecture fits into the existing DetNet and traffic and T's architectures, and that the the way it's written is very narrow, and some of the items that are identified as wireless only are not wireless only. They apply to other technologies. And that's the perspective, the wider perspective that I think has been missing and has made it hard to move this forward. So we can address that by bringing it into DetNet, having a wider discussion there, or we can address it by doing a joint last call and triggering the wider discussion that way. So for, I think the process can work either way, um, but it's really, how do we close on those points that require that broader perspective? Some of it's terminology, and we have to figure it, run that with underground, but not all of it, <clears throat> excuse me, is terminology. For example, promiscuous overhearing is still identified as unique to wireless. Ethernet has had promiscuous overhearing pretty much forever. So, um, you know, that that's just one case. There's a, a whole slew of things which are identified as unique to wireless that I think are actually not. And that's the part that I want to see addressed in the architecture from a technical standpoint. Thanks. I've joined the queue. So back, Go on. So, so back to the question of last call or not, go for it. But I, I had asked to do it in both work as a joint last call. So, so directly responding to that, Lou, um, I think, I'm getting flashbacks to the previous IETF where this document again had slightly stalled because it needed that wider review and the comment uh, the comment at the time was this could do with the wider review and we're failing to get that wider review while it's still very much sat in raw so absolutely happy to help uh, shepherd this forwards get it through a last call uh, from an, an admin perspective but I, I understand the subtext of your comment just now being it needs the wider review in DetNet to align it with DetNet and T's and some of those wider um, comments. That makes me think it's got to go to RAW. Sorry to say that again. It's got to go to DetNet. It really has got to go to DetNet. Go on, Eve. Oh, I was just going to agree that I, I think it's a great idea to do the last call and to do it in both groups. I think that addresses um, sort of the strategy that John uh, talked about, which is it puts people on alert that they have a certain period of time to review this thing and to really show it the attention it requires. Um, and secondly, I think it addresses Lou's concern um, that the broader technical community. And then finally, uh, I think Rick, your concern was uh, also about the wider review needed. And so I, I think that that kind of hits all of the points and concerns that people raise from a process standpoint. Um, and uh, so I think uh, back to Pascal, um, that uh, I think it should go to working group last call and it should be, it maybe it needs to be a, because the, perce the perception is that there are some things that are still major um, from a write-up standpoint, kind of addressing the discussions that, that happened. Um, we give ourselves a, a longer runway, um, but let's do it in both groups. Uh, yeah, Eve, I totally agree. I've made a note. Let's let's just do this in both groups. We'll we'll talk to we'll talk to, we'll lose at the mic. You can comment now, but let's just last call it in both groups and just get it fixed. 
because uh, Pascal has worked on this for, mm -hmm. for a very long time. Yep. Go ahead, Lou. Uh, question, are one of you willing to serve as shepherd for the, the joint last call? Thank you. I have personally shared with young Sorry, Lou, Lou. I, missed, I, I missed that question. My audio went strange for a second. If one of us would be willing to shepherd the document in last call. I was thinking that, and I had said to Lou and to Janos that I would be willing to give it a close review. Um, and uh, I need to think on, and maybe we need to discuss whether one of us, because I do think that that would be a good final um, act of seeing this over the, over the line. Um, Pascal, uh, are there other thoughts you have about shepherding? I know you're online. Oops, Rick, are you still there? I am. I, I had an I had an audio glitch and missed several of the questions there. Sorry, I'll catch up. Lou specifically sorry, asked you. if one of us would shepherd. Okay, much as I would love to, part of the reason I'm I'm having to step down as co-chair is my bandwidth. Um, if I say yes, I am not going to do a good job, so I have to say no. I'm sorry. And here's my hesitation. I am willing to provide it a really detailed review. Um, and as folks know, um, I don't come from the wireless community. And my perspective has been often one of how are the use cases in the upper layers using this technology? So my concern is uh, I can shepherd it and I will can review it and use my review as the, as the write-up. Um, I worry that there will be some details that might go missed. Uh, but presumably that's where others come in as well. So that, that is, um, I think I'm saying yes, I would be willing to do that with the caveats that I have mentioned. Awesome, thank you. So Eve, Janos makes a very nice point on the chat, which is technical issues could probably be a, the, the fine technicality that you are concerned about may well be picked up by review from the wider DetNet community. Um, but so I uh, thank you for, for, for volunteering, Eve, because I think that's part of that, um, helping the document progress. Because one thing I am very conscious about is Pascal has worked very hard and um, we just need to get this over the final step. Because I, I think fundamentally it's very good. So, sort of keeping us on agenda, um, this is all we had for discussion. We can we have a bit more session left. We can continue to discuss this, but there is a danger of us repeating. Uh, but that doesn't mean I want to prevent uh, any further comments if people have further comments. What would the working group like to do? And Eve, chime in by all means. Eve, if you're talking, you're on mute, or you're nope, not talking. I'm not. That's... I'm not talking. <laughs> okay. So the actions I have on my list are uh, working group last call for the OAM uh, draft, and during that last call, we will work out when it is scheduled. Um, architecture draft, a working group joint last call between Petnet and Raw, and. Uh, a continuing conversation between the, the chairs of both groups and the ADs and discussion on the list about how a transition to DebtNet will occur, what the timeline is and what the exact steps and who has to rename a document if a document has to be renamed, et cetera, et cetera. But that will be done in the public with uh, hopefully the 
rough consensus of, of both groups. The Have other two items yep, were the um, that the technologies write up. Um, yep. That uh, Carlos has said he's ready to uh, submit a, or he will, uh, in short order, do a, a write up of uh, as Shepard for the technologies draft. Um, and I think the other draft that we mentioned, but need to also have some closure on, because it is not far from working group last call, is the industry requirements one. Uh, yes. This would be great to see uh, completed. So that's so, the other unknown, but uh, I think with the addition of, um, so we are soliciting uh, maybe additional, in, if, the, if folks have interest in that draft and would like to help us uh, see it completed, please reach out to us. Um, or the authors. Or the authors, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and so so just as a little bit of background here, both Eve and I, kind of half chair hat on, half, half, half chair hat off, really like that document. I think it's a really good document. And so we reached out to the authors to say, oh, it's all got a bit quiet. I think it's actually expired now. Do you, do you have the bandwidth to uh, to pick it up again and, and kind of get it finished off? And the authors very kindly came back and said, we're really busy, which obviously I completely understand. So trying to work out a way between the authors and if anyone else is interested, how to resurrect uh, and keep that document going and perhaps get it to a last call would be really nice. Um, because I think it, it's a really valuable document. So that's kind of a discussion on the list. If uh, I saw Carlos said, oh, I can help with that. Carlos, you are an absolute draft machine. It's uh, amazing. Or Carlos, you. were you re responding to the Pascal conversation? Oh, I don't no, know. No, no. Sorry, sorry to jump in. I was responding to to the volunteering for the industry, industrial requirements. Yes, I Fan excellent. Fantastic. So I think if we can if we can get a, a conversation with the authors on that to to help them uh, get it, we will CC you on an email exchange. How's that? Yeah, we'll do the introduction. So I'm hoping some of them. Well, uh, Karina is. Uh, no, Karina wasn't involved in that one. Uh, I'm trying to no, see if any of the authors. It was a router. A router is not dialed in. So um, yeah. we'll make that happen because I think it's a good document and it would be great to get it polished off. So thanks, Eve. That's that's the other point on the list. Um, otherwise, are we there for this session? Is there anything else, or are people just enjoying the chairs? As in the <laughs> I think seats. We should turn on us. our video. I think we should turn on our video and, and bid adieu. But I I would like to see everyone in San Francisco. Yes. <laughs> Finally, uh, coming my way. If there's nothing else, I think this is the session done. Sounds Thank you good. Everybody for sticking Lovely with to it see you all the... through a camera. Yeah. Okay. Cheers, guys. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Thanks, John. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your support. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Corinna, and all the LDAX people. Well done. Big, big yeah, success. I, I just wrote yes. in the chat, if you need further support for the other documents, just ping me. Excellent. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And well, um, well. if you're going to be in San Francisco, we will have to celebrate that LDAX achievement. I hope so. I'm not sure yet, but let's see. I will keep you in the loop when I'm in person at the IETF. Fantastic. Perfect. It would be lovely to uh, to buy you a drink and say congratulations. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you soon, guys. Okay, bye -bye. Thank you very much. Bye, Lou. Thank you.